What is the fire of Gehenna? As Christian believers, we have been taught to believe that all these concepts related to fire and punishment in the Bible are referring to the same thing, that they are referring to a place of eternal punishment and fire called hell, when in reality, these concepts are all different things in the New Testament. We need to do some due diligence and really dig in and look at where these concepts are coming from and what did they mean to the original audience that they were spoken to. Remember, we are reading somebody else's mail. The Bible was written for us, but not directly to us. And therefore, we need to understand these passages through the eyes of the people that it was originally spoken to and then apply those lessons into our life. So let's begin. What is the fire of Gehenna? Don't be afraid of those who kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. And the tongue is a fire. The world of iniquity among our members is the tongue, which defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire by Gehenna. If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into Gehenna of fire. What most Christian believers today are unaware of is that Gehenna literally is referring to physical earthly destruction in nine out of the 12 instances where the word occurs in the New Testament. This is why Jesus is using this hyperbolic language. Cut off your hand, pluck out your eye. Go to extreme measures is the message Jesus is giving them to save your life, to emerge alive on the other side of this coming judgment that will appear in this very generation is what he is telling them. Only three times in the New Testament is the word Gehenna used in a metaphorical kind of sense. In every other instance, it is being used in a very real, very literal, physical warning of coming destruction. It was a warning that was particularly applicable to the people he was speaking to, the first century Jewish people. This is why the translation of Gehenna as being hell or hellfire is completely utter nonsense. The word hell is the Norse Germanic word for the realm of the dead. Gehenna is not a realm of the dead. It is a warning of destruction, particularly here on earth. The word hell, which really only means the realm of the dead, is a close Germanic equivalent of the word Sheol in Hebrew and the word Hades in Greek. And ironically, modern popular Bible translations no longer translate those words as hell, but they still use hell the Germanic realm of the dead for this concept of Gehenna. This is a translation error of epic proportions. Gehenna is not a realm of the dead and should not be translated as a realm of the dead. The fire of Gehenna appears 12 times in the New Testament and was specifically given as a warning to the Jewish people in the first century. This warning to the Jewish people and to Jewish Christian believers in the first century appears in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and the epistle of James. James was writing to the 12 tribes in dispersion. The Gospel of John, which was specifically written to Gentile Christians, never warns them of the fire of Gehenna. Why? None of the epistles, written primarily to Gentile Christians, ever warns them of the fire of Gehenna. The reason was, this impending warning was specifically applicable to Jewish Christians. Gehenna is not the picture of punishment and fire in the afterlife, something the Greek philosopher Plato imagined, but rather it is the picture of total destruction by fire. But hold on, this is not the picture of annihilationism, the doctrine of annihilationism.
but rather the picture of total destruction here on earth. Let me provide you with some background so you can see what the Jewish believers of that day would have understood about this warning. The fire of Gehenna is reflecting on the judgment that came upon the Jewish people in the book of Jeremiah. Gehenna is the Greek rendering of the Valley of Hinnom, where the children of Israel were sacrificing their babies to the pagan gods Baal and Moloch and burning them alive in a furnace called Topheth. Now back then, they didn't have large earth-moving machines to create giant sanitary landfills as we do today but rather they incinerated their trash in a large furnace that burned 24 hours a day, consuming the trash of the entire city. It was literally a fire that was never quenched. As the trash built up, it was shoveled into this furnace to be sanitized. Like any dump, it would have been filled with stench, flies, maggots, the worm that never dies. In that day, the people of Israel were sacrificing their babies to the pagan gods Baal and Moloch by burning them in this furnace called Topheth. They were literally throwing their unwanted children into the trash furnace. Likely, it was mostly baby girls, since having a son was most desired in that culture. God rendered judgment upon Israel for this great wickedness and turned them over to their enemies to be destroyed. The bodies of the slain Israelites were so numerous, they had to bury them by burning them in this same furnace called Tophet, where they were sacrificing their children. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, beginning in verse 31. They have built the high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and daughters in the fire, which I did not command, nor did it come into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days come, says the Lord, that it shall no more be called Topheth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, for they shall bury in Topheth until there is no place to bury. The dead bodies of this people shall be food for the birds of the sky and for the animals of the earth, and none shall frighten them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall become a waste. This is why the Jewish believers are being warned about the fire of Gehenna. The judgment of God was once again upon them for their great wickedness. Jesus warned them that a prophecy that was made in the book of Daniel was now upon them. Jesus warned that the temple would be destroyed and not one stone would be left upon another. This prophecy did come true exactly as Daniel had predicted and that Jesus warned was impending in that very generation. Jewish historian Flavius Josephus recorded that the Roman army completely destroyed Jerusalem. The Jewish defenders of the city made their last stand at the temple, where they were literally burned alive by the Roman army. Upon completing this destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, the Roman general Titus and his army went into the temple, raised their incense, including the image of Caesar, and worshipped them, desecrating this now-scorched temple complex. After this, the order was given to completely raise the temple to the ground. Josephus records that the destruction was so complete that nobody would know that a temple ever stood there. And of course, all the gold that was in the temple would have melted down into the very cracks of the foundation of this temple. The Roman army had great motivation to tear it completely apart, exactly as they were ordered. Now, the Jewish Christian believers were warned about this coming destruction, and they were told that when you see the armies coming, that you are to leave. Don't even go back for your coat. Go straight to the hills of Judea. Otherwise, the city was going to be completely hemmed in by the Roman army and there would be no escape. Those who rejected Jesus Christ, their Messiah, would have not heeded this warning as they were rejecting the entire message. In the book of Acts, we read about an encounter with the Apostle Paul and the Jewish leaders who were rejecting his message. The book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 6. When they opposed him and blasphemed, 
he shook out his clothing and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. The Apostle Paul knew that this judgment was coming upon them, and he was working very hard in the face of persecution to warn them. In rejecting his message, their destruction was sealed. The fire of Gehenna was at their doorstep.